Greetings comrades, my name is Gigantles, and if you are watching this video, then it means that I have finally succeeded in making content again. And I say that because in my last Life at University video, which feels like an age ago now, I've been having problems with audio, not that I talk too quietly, but because of background ambience from my laptop's fan, which creates a constant whirring or droning noise that even if I try to cover it up with noise gates and the background music, uh, it becomes difficult to hear me because it's so loud, regardless of that. So if you're watching this, then hopefully I've sorted it out. If you, if you see me glance down like this, it's because I'm using a different computer to record myself, one that has a quieter fan, and also because I've moved my microphone so that it's only a few inches in front of me. So hopefully, you hear me better than the fan now. Otherwise, to cover everything that's happened recently. So as you can see, I've gotten a haircut. This was in preparation for my graduation ceremony, which was meant to happen at the time of recording yesterday. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend due to health reasons. And it's a shame because I was meant to get a, a, a free uh, alumni shirt. Um, I was meant to be with the rest of my, with a few more people in my year who had also graduated from Volcanology and I wanted to buy the motorboard is that the name of it the motorboard that you wear I really got one for my last university and I have ordered one for uh, for this year so I'll technically I'll technically have two motorboards representing the two universities I graduated from but the most recent the most recent development was actually relating to my student accommodation I won't release the name of the of the accommodation yet, because I don't like revealing personal information about myself, especially the universities that I graduated from. But recently, my recently, and I buy recently, I mean over the over the past few months, my student accommodation attempted to scam me out of my deposit. As I, I've I've fortunately I've been keeping a record of everything that's been uh, that's been going on. But long story short, um, you had to you had to uh, you had to pay a one hundred pound deposit before you could stay at my accommodation. And after I left in August, I believe uh, the first week of August or something, I tried to clean up a bit as best as I could. Uh, but fortunately, stuff like a vacuum cleaner, there were no vacuum cleaners available because people kept hogging them. Um, there was a constant smell of cigarette smoke because no matter how many times I reported people smoking in the rooms next to me, no one did anything about it and uh, well, the management didn't do anything about it. And also because they, the people chose to smoke whenever the management was not in office, like at night, which was really irritating. It was, it was, it was, quite, it was quite a messy accommodation by the end of it by the end of my tenancy there, especially because the ants that I mentioned before in the first few months, they started coming back too, uh, there were rats outside, so it was, it was gradually getting worse, but fortunately I left in, in early August, and then I spent the rest of August and the beginning of September finishing up my dissertation. So by the end of September, the accommodation in my accommodations group chat said that they had, that they had performed all the cleaning and stuff, and they would be issuing reports and everything about the rooms. After which, every single person that I know of in the accommodation had their deposit withheld. Why? Because, well, sometimes for very stupid reasons. The reasons that were given in the group chat were stuff like leaving a stick of butter in the fridge or, uh, or not vacuuming. But for me, the reason why my deposit was withheld was apparently because there was the, there was the smell of smoke in the room, there was apparently a cigarette burn on the win out on outside the window, and and the third reason was that the okay the fan just popped up. Hopefully you can still hear me. And the third reason was that aside from the smell of cigarettes, uh, cigarette smoke in the bathroom, there was apparently staining on the ceiling. I immediately, uh, I immediately, uh, what's the term? I immediately fought back, saying that no, that's not me and I'm not going to let you have my deposit because in the UK we have something known as the tenancy deposit scheme 
and these are the these are the guys that hold the student's deposit and then if something happens such as the the, the deposit is being withheld or the it, it basically means that the landlord or agency uh, in charge of the student's accommodation they request the uh, the deposit and then it gives the students a chance to uh, to fight back and say no actually the, the deposit is, is ours and your reasoning for withholding it is wrong so it, it, it's it's a it's a third party that prevents uh, accommodation agencies like this from just taking the deposit and us not being able to do anything about it without heading to court so we protested against against this and my dad and I were looking over the the few claims of evidence against us we immediately noticed that there were several problems with the report against us. Firstly, I hate smoking. I absolutely, I absolutely hate the smell of cigarette smoke. My father used to smoke, and he had to sleep. And he would, uh, he would often, when when he smoked, he would go to the end of the garden outside and smoke. And even then, I hated the smell. He eventually, he gave up, like ten years ago. No, more than ten years ago. He gave up like fifteen years ago, maybe. And that's a good thing, because uh, because. Um, Obviously, I love my father and I want him to be on this earth for as long as possible, but I hate the smell of cigarette smoke. So the idea that I would, uh, the idea that I would smoke is an absolutely ridiculous one. Secondly, due to really poor ventilation in my room, I would often find that whatever smell had been predominant in my room would often linger within the bathroom for sometimes an hour after the source of the, s the smell had stopped. So if I had been cooking in my sm in my small kitchen, I would still smell oil in my bathroom when I went in there a little bit later, as an example. Same with cigarette smoke. Even after the smell of smoking had stopped in my room because it had wafted in from my neighbors, I would smell it in whenever I went, went into the bathroom because it would just linger there as there was no proper ventilation unless the shower was on. Thirdly, the staining in my bathroom was only on the ceiling. Because, logically, you, you can't stain uh, tiling, and that's what the walls of my bathroom were, they were tiles. You can't stain tiling unless there is damage to the glaze on top of it. And the staining on my ceiling was not from cigarette smoke, but from a massive leak that happened in, I think, September to October. I recorded, I recorded it all about it in my video, So Many Leaks. Uh, that there was it was a one at one po it was at one point leaking from the uh, light fitting the exposed light fitting on top of my bathroom and then it was leaking in the corridor outside my room uh, it was draining into my room's floor and so you know it was all squishy and stuff it was all wet and yellow water you can watch that video I probably I probably put the link up to that video in the in the video cards wherever that is on the screen but that's from the that's from the water that's from the flood we had not from the uh, well, the leak we had, not from smoking. Fourthly, due to the due to how wide you can open a window, I would not be able to stick my hand outside and put out a cigarette on it. Fifthly, if that's a word. Fifthly, the wall outside of my window is black, which means that you wouldn't be able to see a cigarette uh, a burn from putting out a cigarette on it. Sixthly, if that's a word as well. I had been outside of my room for almost a month. Well, I'd been, I'd already, I'd left my room by about a month before those, uh, before those room checks were done. So how on earth would they know that the smell of cigarettes were, uh, cigarettes were from me? It could have been people smoking outside or people smoking in the rooms next to me. Oh yeah, and probably seventhly, I had been the one reporting people smoking in my accommodation, or at least in my portion of the accommodation, for months. So the idea that they would then blame me for it is just ridiculous. Okay, this isn't re oh, sorry. This is this isn't reverse psychology. But anyway, apart from that and making a very thorough case why I wasn't smoking, because if there's something that people need to realize about me is that I will go very very in depth when it comes to an argument. Anyone who's ever argued with me or my or people that, or people that I've trained on Facebook will know that I will rip apart an argument down to its individual statements to refute them all individually. I am very very thorough in that regard. So those were there were only a handful of arguments that the accommodation made but I'd already written out a small almost like report about why it was wrong so I then summarized it. 
and pointed out the flaws in their, in their reasoning. And then because we didn't, we couldn't come to an agreement, we sent the, we basically sent the, we, we uh, let me, let me reword that or rephrase that. Because I refused to give my deposit to this, to this accommodation with their scam, we, the, the case was then, it was then sent to the, uh, to the student, uh, to the tenancy deposit scheme, who then requested that the, that the accommodation gave evidence for, um, for the situation. Because the way the, uh, the way the tenancy deposit scheme works is that the deposit is technically the student still. And if the accommodation found reason to keep the deposit, they would have to be the ones who provide evidence saying, here's why we need the deposit. And then after some time, the the tenancy deposit scheme would go would go to the students would go to the student and say, right, here's all the evidence that the that the accommodation gave us. It's now your turn to provide evidence and refute the case they have against you. Because in the UK, from what I under, from what I understand, you have to prove a person guilty. Whereas in the US, you have to prove a person in you have to prove a person innocent, right? So innocent, but Proven guilty until innocent, proven innocent until guilty, that sort of thing. So, after, I think they gave the, uh, the accommodation 10 days to provide evidence. And my father had performed a, an initial check where he filmed everything in the room before we started unpacking. And we told the accommodation this. The accommodation, after 8 days of this, uh, responded to, uh, sent an email saying, we noticed you said you had a recording of the room before you uh, before you unpacked. Why haven't you sent this to us yet? And my father and I sent an email back to them saying, because we are under the impression that we have no need to send you any evidence at all, and that any evidence that we have about the case is to be sent to the tenancy deposit scheme instead of you. And then and then that's when it all broke down for my accommodation because they said no, you have to give us your evidence, or we're going to report you not being cooperative with us. And we just ignored them. Then the ten minute, then the ten day window closed, and me and my father went. My father and I waited. After a few days, I sent an email to the tenancy deposit scheme asking when we needed to when we needed to provide evidence, and they, they, they sorry, and they sent another and they sent an email to us, which then said, "We will ask you for evidence if the agency provided any evidence against you." So I went onto the uh, onto the uh, tenancy deposit scheme website. And looked at the and looked at the details of my case. It gave me an option to look at the evidence that the accommodation uh, that the accommodation had provided, uh, presumably so that we could look over it later after the tenancy deposit scheme had looked over it, and then we would refute it. So I looked at the evidence that the landlord, uh, the student accommodation, had provided. None, not one scrap of evidence at all. I told my father about this, and he said. Not surprised. So at the time of recording, last night I received an email from the tenancy deposit scheme, which said that the case had basically been decided in my favour, and the student accommodation had absolutely no evidence to provide regarding why they needed to keep my deposit. Not only that, but the tenancy deposit scheme had also provided a timeline of, of um, a timeline of events from their end, in which they in which they said. Uh, uh, that they had requested, e they they had requested evidence from my uh, accommodation several times before the before the and I think at least a couple times before the before the deadline ended, which the accommodation hadn't sent, which the accommodation hadn't sent. In fact, I believe they had request right after they had requested uh, evidence for the last time, the accommodation went to me saying you need to give you need to give us your evidence. Which my dad pointed out was the classic sign of a scam. So I'm glad that I fought that. I'm glad I fought this case, not just because it was a scam, and it was and, and, and it was a hundred pounds, and you know up for question, but also because my father was really angry that this accommodation had dared accuse me of smoking in my room, when he know he knew that I would never smoke, and I promise you all, it will be a cold day in hell before I smoke. Which I know is a bit weird because, according to Dante's Inferno, Inferno, there is a cold. There are cold regions of hell. But the point is, I would never smoke, and so it was more than a matter of, matter of a hundred pounds, but also a matter of uh, 
a matter of uh, reputation. You know, I would never smoke, and so they're slandering me. But uh, that uh, that scam is over now. Uh, we've we've won the, we've won the deposit back, and it's a bit of a shame to look through my group chat for the accommodation, in which everyone said, "Wait, it was it wasn't worth fighting it." You know, we're gonna pay that. We're gonna let them keep the deposit. But it's no surprise, my dad says, that an accommodation like this would try and scam its students out of a deposit. Because I think there were maybe a hundred of us at least in that accommodation, and if they all kept a hundred pounds from that, then they would easily get. Hopefully, I can do my maths right. They could get uh, ten thousand pounds from everyone overall in profit. I will release the name of this uh, of this accommodation when I feel comfortable enough to release it, because the moment I release the name of this, people who want to know more about me will look, or people who are curious will look it up and realize, oh, he must have gone to that university. I'm not particularly comfortable re 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 releasing that sort of information right now. But yeah, like I said, I'm glad that the scam is over. That chapter is over, and with that, that's a bit of a burden off my shoulders now. So I can look forward to the new year, and um, the new I can look forward to the new year and all of the potential job op and all the job opportunities and stuff that there are because I'm going to have to go into the world of work now. And I know I focused this video quite a bit on um, yeah, that's still recording. I know I know I focused this video quite a bit on university and stuff, even though I've you know got a Chris. Christmas background, and I don't have a hat on, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I forgot to put that on. I keep forgetting to put my Christmas hat on when I record these videos. But it's, it's a bit hard sometimes to reflect on videos, like on make reflecting videos, because I because I end up just repeating myself over and over. But technically, this is meant to be my Christmas video for this year. It's not the final video of this year. I'll do I'll do that video next week, in which I also conclude my life at university series. Since I'll be fin I've finished university now, and I'll be doing uh, work next year at some point when I find a job, and do the, another series in the future. But hopefully, you all out there have a good Christmas and you celebrate it according to your uh, respective traditions. I know that. Um, I know that there's a lot of people claiming stuff like Christmas is based on paganism, which I have refuted repeatedly. Whether you claim it, whether the, whether they claim it was based on Sol Invictus, Saturnalia, Yule, whatever, I've I've made videos refuting all that. I've made posts refuting all that on Facebook, and I'm sure I'm sure that I'll continue to get com comments in my in my videos as I have been for the last month, claiming no, you're wrong. Christmas is based on paganism and all of its tradition and all of its traditions. But need I remind everyone that even even though there's very very little evidence that Christmas traditions were based on pagan traditions, such as the usage of the Christmas tree, would it even matter if it was if it if it um if Christmas did adopt pagan traditions but Christianized them? Because you're not paying homage to some uh, some ancient pagan god by putting up a Christmas tree. When you put that up, you put it up with the intentions of a uh, of celebrating Christmas, not worshiping that god. So it's it, it's not really worship, like some sort of secret pagan worship, if you're not doing it with the intention for it to be secret pagan worship. It is possible to divorce uh, to divorce holidays from their initial intentions, as we've seen with the secularization of Christmas. Putting aside a putting aside a, a, the apparently pagan roots of Christmas. Um, the way Christmas has been commercialized, people have said it's no longer, uh, it's no longer celebrating the initial reason why we have Christmas, which is the celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But so, if that's possible, that you could divorce Christmas from its initial Christian roots, why do pagans act like it's impo or why do atheists act like it's impossible to separate Christmas from its apparent pagan roots? There's a bit of hypocrisy there. But regardless of how you celebrate Christmas, as long as it's celebrated morally, so you know no drunkenness or anything, make sure that you uh, make sure that you try to keep the fee the day of holy obligation on Christmas Day if you can. If not, attend the night before on Christmas Eve, and make sure that you don't forget that Christmas is all about. It's not. 
sure, it's it's an excuse for the family to get together and everyone to uh, everyone to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But also remember that the Christmas is centered around Christ Himself, and if people don't like the way that Christmas has been secularized and commercialized, then you really need to put the Christ back in Christ in Christmas. I almost said Christmas, but yeah, just just so just remember the uh, that the reason why we have Christmas is because Christ was born. And as it's you know yeah I might as well as it's the end of the year I thank all of you out there for supporting me for this year we've finally achieved 1,000 subscribers and we've been growing quite quickly uh, over the last couple of months according to my YouTube uh, subscribers stats we've grown by almost 30 subscribers within this month alone I'm grateful for that thank you all we've uh, we've reached 600,000 views which is an impressive number. Uh, hopefully we can continue to grow throughout the next year too. Not because I want to make tons of money or I want to be really popular on YouTube. I make these videos as I, as I, uh, as I explained in my journey through the faith video. I make these videos not because I want attention, but because I want to teach people what I what I wish I had known uh, before I before I fell into error and apostasy. I may have to pause this video within the next few seconds. Sorry about that everyone, uh, Charlie was barking and I had to go get him, but at least I got the hat now. Okay, so I got the hat on, and I also, I've also got Charlie here, my little sweet dog, look at him. Okay. No? Okay. You just sit on my lap. So anyway, thank you all again for this year, for all the growth that we've had in, uh, on both YouTube and Facebook, for helping me get a better outreach, a bigger outreach to more people. So that we can, uh, so that I can, hopefully uh, reach those people who are don't know as much about the faith as they should, or are perhaps facing a lot of anti-Catholicism uh, mis misinformation that unfortunately leads to them questioning various aspects of their faith. A lot of my video, a lot of my content is very information-based in an attempt to try and refute these anti-Catholic accusations and prove the credibility of Catholicism through the weight of sheer fact and historical evidence so this is what I mean I keep getting I keep getting repetitive and apologies if I'm sitting at a weird angle it's the way my I'm set up and I've got Charlie on my lap here but again thank you all for all the progress this year and hopefully next year we can have another year of just as great progress reaching out to more people and helping people and helping uh, my fellow Catholic brothers and sisters learn more about the faith and how to best to defend it against this very anti-Catholic world that we live in. So thank you all out there for your support. God bless you all. Have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. See you in the next video, comrades. Until then.